Hello, it's Colin. I'm back with another project. This one's called Serene Scene, a bit of a tongue twister. And in today's session, I'm going to show you how to use, also show you how to use the offline version of Scratch. So let's get cracking. So hopefully um, you're noticing a little bit of a difference with my sound recording because I've treated myself to a new microphone. And then we're going to do is go to Raspberry Pi projects. And on the projects page, we're going to put, turn on the Code Club filter. And from the Code Club filter, we're going to uh, trump down to the Look After Yourself section. And uh, we're going to pick up Serene Scene. Uh, Serene Scene is a game where you can change a number of settings on a scene. Um, you can hear rain. We can make flowers change colour. The online version of the flowers is as you can see on the screen now. The offline version has a slightly different bunch of flowers. I'm just going to turn the rain down. We can change the lightness and darkness on our scene. We can make our tree shrink and grow. And we can make our grasshopper go slower or go faster. To you can carry on using the offline the online version if you want to. I'll show you how to get to the project in a moment. But first part of today I was going to show you how to get to offline scratch. So click on the offline link on the page there and on this page go to direct download which is down the bottom here. And this is going to download Scratch to your computer. Save it into your downloads folder. Oops, save. And now that that's downloaded, if you double click on the exe file in, on your downloads folder, I'm going to set mine up for anybody that uses my computer, which is fine. Scratch is now being installed on my machine. So that's Scratch now set up. Press Finish and this will launch Scratch. And there it is sitting on my desktop down the bottom there. So this is the offline version of Scratch. The next thing I need to do is I need to go and get um, the project starter file because we're using the offline version. This will download a zip file that holds Serene Scene resources. Save that into my downloads again. Navigate to my downloads folder. And there's the folder file I've just downloaded. Open that up. The one we want is Serene Scene Starter. I'm pressing Ctrl and C to copy that or you could do right click and copy. And then I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm just going to paste that on my desktop so that I can get to it uh, in a moment. Um, I've already downloaded this once already, but I'm just going to replace the file I've got on there. So that's the file downloaded and saved to my desktop. Now if I go into Scratch, and this is offline Scratch, go File, Load from my computer, and the file I'm off, I've, I've navigated to my desktop, and the file I've just downloaded is the file I want, Serene Scene Starter and open that up and that's us ready to go let's bring back my my uh, projects page I'm going to press Windows and left arrow key to make that fit the left hand side of the window and um, scratch there on the right hand side that's just fill the screen automatically if it doesn't do that just press Windows and right arrow key and then I'm going to switch this over to the left and I've got my instructions on one side and I've got a scratch on the other side. What are we going to learn today? We're going to learn about creating variables. We're going to learn about using sliders to change the value of variables and we're going to use forever loops. If you're using the online version of Scratch, there's a link here that will take you to a starter project 
that has all the artifacts for the project uh, included. Um, and you'll notice that on the online version, the flowers are slightly different. There's a bunch of six flowers in a row compared to our, oops, uh, compared to our bouquet of flowers, let's call it on, on there. But um, once you've, if you do use the online version and you want to use this one, you'll need to do press the remix button which will give you a copy of that project for you then to for then for you then to do uh, to follow through on the project notes. I don't need that today, so I'm just going to go back to my uh, instructions. I'm going to open up Scratch. I'm just going to click over there to left out right Windows left arrow key, and that's me ready to go for today's uh, project. So uh, we have a project. It has three sprites on it at the moment. I like to have a look at what, see what sprites, what costumes the sprites have got. So I've got the tree selected at the moment. I'm going to click on costumes. Okay, so that's my tree. Uh, looking at the tree, just as an aside here, I can see it's got different elements to it. So I could move things around. If I want to make a tree that was slightly different, I could move things around. So we can do with that. Spin things around. Um, my grasshopper, sorry, my tree only has one costume. My grasshopper has six costumes. So if we, have it, if, if we create a loop that loops through the grasshopper's uh, costumes, we can create the effect of the grasshopper uh, jumping. And my spring flowers, or my, my flowers are, uh, they only have one costume. So that's, um, that's all about the, sprites on today's project so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change build some code to change the size of our tree uh, so clicking on our tree and going to our code tab i'm then going to go to the variables i'm going to create a variable um, the instructions say you just create a variable variable called tree i like to give my variables a, a, a decent name so you know what it means so i'm going to change my tree my name of my variable to be tree size um, when we create variables in computer programming, we don't normally we don't normally create a variable that says tree space size because the computer will think that's two words. We use something to join the two words together, and most of the time we use the underscore character. But you could use a minus, or you could do uh, like, like it's called camel case. So you could do tree size. But I'm going to stick with the convention we're using here, or I'm used to using tree underscore size. And it's going to be for all sprites and press OK. Having created that variable, I then get four boxes appear that allow me to do some um, maintenance on that variable. I can set, I can use the set tree size to a, a, a starter size. I can change the tree size, and I can also use a couple of there's a couple of blocks there allow me to hide and show the variable that's appeared on my screen over here. So I've wanted to hide it. Sometimes we want to hide things. I can just double click on that and show it. Um, we want to turn this variable into a slider variable so I'm going to right click on there and click slider now when I drag the slider along you can see the value in that try in that uh, the value of that variable will change from uh, 0 to 100 um, so now we're going to create a code that makes the tree change size as we move the slider so we're going to get an event for when the green flag is clicked we're going to get a control to run forever and because we've got the tree selected we're just going to go for looks and set size to and let's bring in our variable tree size we called it just pop that in there if I press the run key now, every time I drag my slider up and down, the value of the tree changes in size. What if we didn't want the limit, the tree size to be limited to 100? Well, actually, if we right click on there, another option has now appeared. We can change, this, change the slider range. Uh, the instructions tell us to change from 100 uh, to... 300 uh, you can set these to whatever you like uh, at a bigger size it doesn't make much difference but smaller sizes i'm going to make mine go from 50 to 300 
So that's 50%, so that's half its current size, up to a maximum value of three times its size. Um, having made a change, it's good practice to uh, test. So look, I've made my tree go smaller, and I can make it go really big. So that's the tree size slider controlling the size of our tree, and that's a very small block of code that just runs continuously once the green flag is clicked. Save our project. I'm going to go File and Save. I'm going to leave the default name of this project, scene, Serene Scene Starter, and save that. It'll overwrite the file that's there, so that means I've got a backup. I've got a, a working copy of my my program now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do something with the color of the flowers, and so we're going to select the flowers first of all, and we're going to create another variable, and we're going to call it uh, flower underscore color, spelt the proper way. And uh, if you can remember, we got the green flag for when the uh, block is clicked. We had a forever loop, which is under control. And we're going to set color effect to. So that's under looks. And that's set color effect to. Be careful, there's two different ones, two that look the same there. It's the set color effect to. And let's bring in our variable for flower color pop that in there. Let's do a little test. So, uh, oh, we didn't turn this into a slider, so I'm going to right click on my flower color, make it into a slider. Now we can see, oh, it doesn't work because we haven't pressed the green flag. I made a change, I didn't press the green flag, so press the green flag. You can see that block of code has been lit up. Now when I run, press this, you can see my flowers change to a range of beautiful colors. Um, we can make the slider go into minus figures. So if I change that to minus 100, okay. We can see that we get a range of colors and uh, quite fluorescent looking flowers. That's all the instructions for that. So we're gonna go file, save to our computer. Yep. We can also put some effects onto our backdrop, onto our stage. So over on the right hand side, if I click on my stage, I've now got the stage I can I can code. I need to create another variable because we're going to make this, the stage go lighter and darker. Uh, so let's call this uh, daylight. And press OK. I'm going to make that into a slider to begin with because I've forgotten that a couple of times now. And we want the slider range to be a value between minus 40 and 40. I'm not going to do that because I'm naughty. I'm going to change it to minus 100 and plus 100. So um, whenever you're doing anything computer coding, um, always experiment with what you're told to do because that's the way you're going to learn. Make some mistakes uh, and understand what the limitations of the different things you do are. So starting off again, we get the, when the green flag is clicked, we're going to get the forever loop. Pop that on there. And this time we want the set color effect too. So that's under looks. And that's this one here. There's quite a few options in here. So when you've got a few moments, you might want to have a little play with those. But the one we want is brightness. And we're going to bring in variable. And we're going to check, bring the daylight variable into there and pop that in there stop and press green flag now when i change my uh, slider for daylight it gets brighter really bright and i go backwards it gets darker and to really dark if you limited that to 40 you go from like that darkness to plus 40 that darkness so I left, I changed it to 100 so you could see the full range of uh, brightness and darkness appear. Um, what are we going to do now? We're going to put some sounds on. Right, so at the beginning you might have heard, well you did hear the rain. Um, so we're, now we're going to do um, 
we're going to create and we're going to get a, we're going to get some rain sound so on the sounds tab up here we're going to pull in a sound from the file we're going to search for some rain and we've got three blocks have appeared if i just click on the little play button there you can hear, hopefully hear rain thunder hang on a minute that's not rain so why has train whistle appeared Ah, look, train has got rain as part of the word, the spelling. So where we searched for rain, it also brought back train. Uh, the one we want is rain. So I'm just going to click on that and that brings the, the rain sound into my program. Um, we're going to create another variable for uh, the rain volume. So back to my code and we're on still on the backdrop. We're going to create another variable. We're going to call that rain underscore volume I'm just going to do VOL and press OK we need we need to have two loops one to play the sound and one to set the volume so events let's bring that in twice now we want two forever loops they're under control forever forever play sound rain until done because we've got rain picked on our page here rain will now appear under the sound option here and we can pop that in there and then the other one was set volume so that's under sound as well set volume to a percentage and bring the variable in and we want the rain volume variable that's different to say when you have a tooth missing Right, so now when I press the green flag, um, oh, nothing happens. Why is that? Well, we didn't make our rain volume into a slider. And it was set at zero. So I'm hopefully, as I move this up through the thing, we can now hear the rain. So we've got a way of turning, making the rain come, uh, come and go louder and, louder and quieter save our project um, we're going to add some fauna now fauna means animals in this in this step we're going to add we're going to make our grasshopper move we've already seen our grasshoppers got some different costumes so i'm going to click the grasshopper i'm going to get the green flag green flag is where under events correct and we're going to make it go to the back layer so um, the back layer means that it will go behind anything else on the screen I can demonstrate that in a moment um, we're going to set the rotation style left and right Do you re remember on the butterfly one the butterfly went upside down well that's to stop the uh, grasshopper going up and upside down and we're now going to add a forever loop to move five steps and change costume uh, control forever motion move oh i'm going to leave on 10 because we're going to change that in a minute looks is under uh, sorry next costume is under looks and if on edge bounce that's under do, 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 motion if on edge bounce so when I press the green flag now, our cricket, our cricket, our grasshopper just bobs around behind the, the um, other sprites. If I'd um, just to demonstrate, if I change this top one, the layer thing to go to front, you'll now see the grasshopper jumps in front of the tree and in front of the flowers. So that's what that's doing. That's making, controlling where the sprite um, appears in relation to the other sprites. Let's change that back to back level. It won't do anything because I've already started it. I need to stop it and start again. And that's the, the cricket going to the back. The cricket's going a little bit too fast. So under our, let's just stop that. Um, under control, there is a weight block. So I can put weight block in there and I can press the book flag. And this will make our cricket go really slowly. Grasshopper. Um, so we're going to create a variable that controls the speed of the grasshopper. So back to our variables. 
I'm going to call it GH speed. In fact, let's call it hopper speed. And we're going to turn that into a slider. Now, the way this is going to work is we, because we, this will only work with small numbers, is we're going to, uh, first of all, put that grasshopper speed into my weight block. And if we click the, the um, hopper speed button, we'll notice as, as we click it, he's getting really slower and slower because the number is getting bigger. So the number that number 27 there is going to be put into there. So it's waiting 27 seconds between each each hop. We don't really want that. So what we can do is we need to multiply the grasshopper variable by a number smaller than one. In other words, a number that's smaller than 100 over 100. Oh, God, that's difficult. Trust me. Um, we need to go to operators, bring in the divide by, stick 100 in this side, pop the hover speed option into there, then pop that operator into there, and did we set a range on that? And then we set a slider range between 0 and 20. Well, let's just see what happens here for the moment. Okay, that slowed that down quite nicely. So the grasshopper gets faster if we move it to the left because the number on top of the divisor is smaller, getting smaller, as opposed to down the other end, it's getting all closer to one. So let's put a range on that to be 20. 0 and 20, press OK. So that's our grasshopper um, speed. Oh, add some more. Now we're going to add a dragonfly to our project. Um, they don't give us any instructions on this one, so let's do this one together. So come down to our sprites, uh, search for dragon. There's the dragonfly sprite. Incidentally, if you want to put something else on there, you put something else on there. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm going to go for dragonfly, follow the instructions. Dragonfly. Again, let's have a look at our costume. So our dragonfly has got two costumes. That's handy. He looks a bit big to me, so I think we need to change its size. So I double click in there and I can change the size, let's say, to 50%. Mm, that's still a bit too big. Um, 30%. Yeah, that's okay. I don't mind that. Let's drag him down there so we can see him. A little rascal. Right, so let's do some coding on this one. First of all, let's make him his wings. So uh, green flag again. Control again forever. And I think uh, under looks, we'll bring in a next costume block. So I press the green flag now. Hopefully you can see it. Let's make it bigger. We can just make out that our um, grasshopper is um, buzzing away. Looks a bit boring, really, doesn't it? Let's make our grasshopper slide left to right. Um, so let's uh, go for motion. Let's move 10 steps. Oh, he's gone whizzing off the side of the page, but he's stopped. We had that problem on the butterfly and on the cricket one, the grasshopper. So we need to do, what do we need to do? We need to do on edge bounce. Pop that in there. Oh no, he's gone upside down now. Can you re remember how we fix that? Yeah, let's just stop him when he's the right way up. And we need to put in the set rotation style. And that was under looks. Set rotation style left and right. De -de -de -de. It's under motion. Sit rotation style left and right. Um, we want to control the speed. Oh, let's just test. Let's just test that. Okay, that's pretty neat. Um, we haven't done a, a slider to control how fast he's going. So let's stop that. Let's create a variable. Uh, dragon speed. 
dragon fly speed make that into a slider um, put our dragonfly speed into the block replace the steps there so now we can control our dragonfly speed press the green flag oh he's hidden behind here somewhere so let's just move these all at the top so we've got like a, a menu why is our dragonfly moving uh, oh yeah um we need to change the slider don't we so all right um right so now i'm going to save that project yeah we know we know and um because I've used the offline script version of Scratch, I can't save it unless I put it into the online version of Scratch. So um, I have uh, Scratch open here, the online version of Scratch that I showed you at the beginning. I can just make that big so you can see now. I've signed into my stuff. And on the onla online version of Scratch, I can go to File, Load from my computer, and navigating to where I've saved it, so it's on my desktop. It was a Serene Scene Starter project, and open. It says, do you want to re replace the contents of the current project? That's fine, there's nothing going on there. And now this is my um, offline project, online. And if I press the play, I'm gonna make it big. And just show you what it looks like. Uh, let's have some rain volume. Um, the grasshopper gets faster when you make when you make the number smaller. Uh, daylight and night time. Tree size. And I think my favourite is the, the colour flowers. Okay, let's uh, just turn the rain off. Uh, go back to the project. Now I can um, I can share this, and uh, I'd like to see what things you make. And the way you share things is by pressing the share button. And project name. If I change the project name, it would come up with some different stuff. And so it's got instructions on how to use the project. Um, I'm going to sit in here. Press green flag to start and use sliders to change attributes and uh, I was going to put in here um, raspberry pi serene scene project Oop, can't spell project. Um, what I'm going to suggest we do, we, we don't use the Scratch version for um, commenting. If you want to comment on people's projects, I'd suggest we do it on Facebook, and then more people can see it without too much to do. Okay. So then the, the way you say that then is, um, so if you press the copy link button here, you get a link that pe appears then with, all the, with the link in, which you can highlight, or you could just highlight the the link on the main project. Um, the easiest thing actually is to make it big and then copy that scrap that um, that line that uh, URL at the top there press Control C and then paste that into Facebook. Well that was a uh, pretty fast going um, hope the sound on my system is a bit better than it has been and hope you've enjoyed that. I'll leave links in the description for um, the project instructions and also the version of the project that I just created. See you next time when we will be looking at making a bowl of fruit. Okay, bye.